What's going on, gang? Bolt Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Machine Robo Series number three, Eagle Robo. The figure itself is in this wonderful box that's actually a little bit bigger than all the others because of his alt mode, or I'm sorry, his jet mode. Inside the box, we have directions on the bottom. Oops. We've got directions and warning label on the bottom. We have a stand that the figure comes with and the figure itself with his weapon. The stand can transform into two different modes, the first of which is more like a garage mode, and the other is this floating figure stand, which I prefer. I like this mode for all of the machine robos as opposed to the standing one. Eagle Robo has this little butt plug that allows him to be connected, but unlike the other two where the actual connector port is pointing down, this one is pointing straight back. So you do have to think about that when you're going to pose him on these little stands. Also, once you put the connector port in, you are really hard pressed to get it back out. Unlike the other two, which it's they slide in and out very easily, this one just keeps, well, stuck. Eagle Robo's weapon is a combination of four different components. There are two stock components and then two missiles that form the front barrel. You'll see these in plain mode in their individual forms. It's not a bad gun by any stretch, but it is just a little bit weird and a little bit fiddly. Out of the box, Eagle Robo does look very good and definitely feels like an updated Leader One. I'm okay with that. The head sculpt is definitely not what we have here in the US though, when we think of Eagle Robo or Leader One. It's, uh, it's a flight mask. The figure has a lot of posability. Head is on two different ball joints, one in the head, one in the, ch one in the chest. Ball joint at the shoulders, swivel underneath that, double hinge at the elbows, fists are on a ball joint, torso articulation, ball joint in the hips, swivel at the top of the thigh, bend at the knee, though you do have to be careful, and ball joint in the feet, with the feet being able to move in and out. Now you can pull off some okay poses, but you're better off putting him on the stand flying in the air because quite frankly, my figure is terrible at standing. The reason my figure has such issues standing is threefold. One, the torso is incredibly loose. This swivel is very loose and it keeps wanting to fall out. I keep having to push it back into the body. Two, ball joints in the hips, very, very, very loose. Not so loose that they'll just fall down on their own, but loose that the fact that the die cast chest of the figure has a tendency to just flop backwards. And finally, and probably the worst is, well, do you see a problem with the feet? We have the tail wing, which is fine, but then we have the side wings, which I swear they should be able to slide up, but they don't. They completely prevent the heels from even touching the ground without the figure split like this. And even then there are problems because the tail wings, as you see, are so much farther down than the feet. That's a real problem for me. That, that's more of an annoyance than anything. You could try and pull the let feet out, but as you saw, you just pop the ball joint and it's just kind of a mess. There's bad design and bad implementation here that really irritate me. And I was really, really, really looking forward to Eagle Robo. I still like the figure, but he's got issues. Now maybe this is just mine. Maybe this is just a one-off problem. I can fix the torso, I, probably. I can fix the hips. I can't fix the design decision of the feet. Conversion into jet mode is actually the most complex of all of these guys, I think. To start off with, we're going to fold these little bits down that are next to the head and turn the head around 180 degrees. Come up to the shoulders and push them closed. Then fold these little bits that are on the outside of the shoulders straight down like this. Then come to the hands and put the arms out straight. Turn the figure around and you see the back of the forearms will have flaps that fold out. We can then fold the hands into the forearms like so, then turn the forearms such that those flaps are pointing forward to the front of the figure, like this. Then we will take those sections and fold them up, and there are these little pegs that are on the back of the elbows. They will peg into these sections 
on the shoulders. So just get those pegged into place. And then come up to the back of the figure, grab these back panel sections and unpeg them, and then fold the entire nose cone and back sections away from the figure. Then take the shoulders and fold them up. And there are little snaps up here that you want to snap the shoulder up into. And then fold the section here that was the forearms, and they will snap into the abdomen. And do that for both sides. And the first time I did this, honestly thought I was breaking pieces. I really, really did. The directions aren't completely clear on the best way to do this. But once you get everything in place, everything looks pretty good. Except for this one section that doesn't want to come together right. There we go. So, there we have the upper torso. That is done. Now, we will come to the back of the figure, take the nose cone, flip it up past these gray sections, and fold it over the robot head, and then push it up until it snaps into place. Now these back section bits, fold them down flush, and they will snap into the bottom of the plane. Come down to the legs, fold the feet up so they form thrusters, fold the wings, or part of the wings, down now, and then fold the legs up into the body, like that. They will hinge down, snap together. They will snap into the body, and then we can fold the wings down, and they will snap in, flip up the tail wings, or ailerons, and we are done! Except for folding out the landing gears. Aha! Even though the transformation is a little bit complicated, I can't argue with the awesomeness that we end up with other than the shaking. The plane mode is pure, pure 80s love. I adore this plane mode. It looks so good. Only complaint I've ever, I really have in the plane mode has to do with the cockpit and the front of the fuselage. It does have a tendency to come unclipped way too easily. Other than that, I think this is pretty darn cool. And then you can add his weapons. His weapons, or his weapon in robot mode, does split into multiple components. And here are the components added up. We've got the two banks of missiles and then the two other pieces that form the stock and the over part of the barrel. I'm assuming they're supposed to be guns of some sort. Anyway, I think this figure in vehicle mode is just frippin' fantastic. Robot mode's okay, except for the issues that I outlined earlier, but overall, it's a very, very nice evolution of Leader One, or Eagle Robo. So gang, I hope you have enjoyed this video review. I think this figure is worth picking up. I'm personally a fan of Battle Robo over Eagle and Drill and Rod Drill, but all of them are definitely worth having in your collection. So gang, I hope you've enjoyed this video review. As always, I'm Bolt Matrix. I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.